Hey guys, Booligan here with Booligan Shooting Sports. Today, we're taking an updated look at my always evolving Cricut bolt action 22 long rifle pistol project. Last time you guys saw this thing was just a couple of weeks ago, and you may recall it had that really big aluminum chassis, which personally, I was quite proud of. The chassis itself comes from KSA, so from, from Cricut themselves, but I had done a couple of 3D printed modifications to it in order to add some storage for things like the suppressor, add some rounds, add a side folding brace, etc., etc. Well, the problem is the whole idea behind this build was to make something that would be lightweight very portable, easy to store, easy to chuck into a backpack if you're going camping or hiking or something like that. And it just got too big. In fact, it got really big. This is just the chassis without the grip. So what I ended up doing, compare with that in just a minute, what I ended up doing was actually designing from the ground up a completely new 3D printable Cricut chassis. A little bit about the project again really quick for those that aren't familiar. This started life as a 12 inch barreled Cricut pistol. It was never a rifle. Uh, Cricut makes pistols. A lot of people don't actually realize that. Um, all of the pistols are left hand bolt um, so that you can be holding onto the pistol grip and manipulate the bolt. I had the barrel shortened to about six inches long from uh, barrelthreading.com and obviously it has been threaded in order to fit my suppressor in this case an amtac fire ant uh, suppressor which is a very very good suppressor it's it's one that i like a lot um, and it is sort of my dedicated rim fire can so that's the base build what i ended up doing is from the ground up using images scaled images and things like that um, i designed a completely new chassis the chassis just barely will fit on the bed of an Ender 3, and it will work with both pistols like this or rifles. Uh, you're just going to have, you know, an extra 10 inches of barrel sticking out the front. Um, and I designed it in a couple of different flavors, vanilla being just no accoutrements, no mag or no round holders on the side, no suppressor holder up front, which we'll talk about. And then this is kind of the fully loaded version. Let's go ahead and let's dive into this really quick, starting at the front. Well, we'll start at the back. The more interesting stuff's up front. So at the back, you have a Picatinny mount here, which allows you to mount a variety of things. In this case, this is the version two of my printable folding uh, pistol brace. As you can see, it is not a stock, it has a very thin profile, has a very short length of pull, and has a strap for strapping to your arm. It also folds, in this case, to the left, and you could print it mirrored so that it folds to the right as well. Got a decent little lock up there for being plastic on plastic. Um, this new version of my brace is light, or is a, it's actually, I think, a tiny bit heavier. It uses a tiny bit more material than my version one, but it is much easier to print. And um, it's quite solid. I like it. I think it looks nice. It doesn't have those triangles in it from before. Then you have the chassis. It has an integrated trigger guard. And in this case, my grip, it'll use any AR style grip, but the grip that I use is actually a modified AR mountable VZ61 grip design. And here it's printed in wood, wood PLA. So it's like 80% plastic, 20% actual wood powder. It's pretty cool stuff, it has a nice texture to it. Um, it smells like wood, it feels like wood, because it is wood, you can actually sand it like wood. Um, but it's designed with this little notch in it and then the hinge has a little bump in it as well so that you have sort of the best mix of durability in the hinge with the minimal amount of impacting your gripping area with the grip. This is, the chassis is secured just like it was before. The barreled action slits in and then it is tightened with a screw. In my case, I have it set up with just a, um, it's like a hand screw, so it's a screw or it's a bipod mount, if you will, with a uh, 
keyring on the bottom. So that way, if I need to break this down, um, I can simply just unscrew it by hand and break it down. Very, very easy to accomplish. Up front, you will notice you have some rounds, both sides, seven rounds on each side. Um, this gap here in the side is because it interfered the uh, scope mount that I use. I have a very long eye relief. This is a pistol scope. It's actually kind of designed to be used that far out. Um, but the scope rings and the scope uh, mount itself interfered with being able to pull rounds out. So it's got a gap here and then I left space up front. Uh, this thing doesn't exactly need to be Rambo ready with you know, a whole fleet of bullets there, of cartridges. Um, I wanted to be able to store my suppressor. That's something I really liked about my last version was that I built that handguard that bolted onto the aluminum chassis and then gave you a place to store my, the suppressor. In this case, I just built it into the chassis itself. You can unscrew it. There is a threaded base, just like that. Get the light there. Um, it is pinched in, if you will, so that it, you know, it's not just being held on by this threaded base. The threaded base just secures it against the chassis. The chassis itself is holding it in place. The nice part is that also gives you a place to put the muzzle protector when you are not running it. I'm not gonna install it right now, but just sort of wanna give you guys a quick look of how this is fully kitted out and ready to shoot. Look at that. You have a total barrel length that's like 10 and a half inches long, counting the suppressor. Um, it's a direct thread suppressor, so you don't really have to worry about like point of impact shift. It, it threads on there very nicely. Barrelthreading.com did an excellent job when they cut the threads on this so that it just mounts perfectly consistently every time. And you just have a very, very nice little plinker or even in an emergency situation, uh, a game getter, you know, if you needed to take out some squirrels or, you know, some, some small game, if you are out and about, you can very, very easily do that with this pistol. And just like that, that is now stored up and ready to go. The other modification that I made, if you know the cricket pistols and the cricket rifles for that matter, you know that there are two separate actions to cocking it. You have to cock it, uh, chamber the round, and then you have to pull back the little cocking handle. I modified that. So now we're gonna go ahead and we'll pull the bolt out. Um, it's a little dirty but you'll be able to see, possibly if we can get it to focus in. Nope, I'm just gonna post some pictures of the modification, a little bit easier to see. But I sanded down a notch that allows it to actually cock on closing. Go ahead, run this through really quick. So you'll eject the spent round, put a new round in, and then as you're pushing it forward, you're gonna start hitting resistance there. That's because it is now cocking the actual striker. Then you're just ready and you're just fired. Um, it is a very simple modification to do. Um, just a little bit of time with a file and with uh, a Dremel tool to just kind of open up the channel so that it is able to access the sear when it is not just in that position. The one negative side of that is, technically speaking, again, still working off of an empty chamber here, at any point in this press, before you are in battery, you can pull the trigger. Now, if we were dealing with something that was more powerful than 22 long rifle, this would be a no-go. I would never say to do this modification, and obviously this is a modification that you can do at your own risk. Um, the simplest thing to do is just maintain your finger off of the trigger until you are ready to fire. And you're now not going to have that problem. It's just you have the capability 
because there's no sort of out of battery um, prevention on this. You have the ability, as you can see here, it bolts barely forward to pull the trigger and it will release that um, sear. So that is very at your own risk gunsmithing, like with all gunsmithing projects. Um, but it definitely does increase the usability for me and the understanding that I can use this safely by, you know, not pulling the trigger when you're not intending to pull the trigger. Um, the comparison in weight. So this setup in the previous chassis was about five pounds, four and a half, about four and a half pounds. This whole setup as pictured under three pounds. It's just a little bit under three pounds. Um, for a brace stabilized, optic equipped, suppressor ready and suppressor on board, bolt action rimfire pistol, that is pretty astoundingly light. And if you know these things, you know that they're actually really quite accurate, um, especially with a good crown job, which barrel threading did on this barrel. Um, it's just a free floated barrel setup. This thing's an absolute tack driver. And I know I need to get out to the range and get more video content for you guys uh, of me actually shooting these things. It's the one thing I would like to do a little bit more. Um, and we'll, we'll get out there. We'll get out there and do it. But yeah, this is a really, really cool setup. If you would like to build your own, the files for both this fully loaded version, as well as the um, vanilla version that just has a normal hand guard instead of a suppressor storage in case you don't have a suppressor, those are available on my library page or new website that leads to my library page, booligancustomgunworks.com. So you can go there and that's where you can find all of my released files. All of my files get released first and foremost to my Patreons and we will list them here. Many thanks to them. Uh, we just started that the Patreon page a little while ago, but it has picked up and it, the support from everybody on there really does help, uh, helps get better equipment. You notice we have a microphone now and just helps produce better content for you guys. And of course they get some nice perks. We've got our first sticker pack that went out to them and they get CAD designs early and stuff like that. So many thanks to them for all of the help that they are able to provide with running the channel, getting this channel going good. And of course, many thanks to all of you guys for watching, for clicking, for subscribing and of course, thanks for watching.